Complete 15 from Native Instruments is here, but what's the best part? The biggest version of Complete 15 has over 160 instruments and effects and 120 sound expansions, making it really difficult for me to choose my favorite part. Not only that, but we get Ozone 11 Standard for mastering, we get Guitar Rig 7 Pro for our amp sim needs, Massive X, and a whole host of new instruments. Now, spoiler alert, my favorite part, and indeed favorite parts, are amongst those new instruments. Now, when I'm using those new instruments, I'll undoubtedly be using the new and included Contact 8. So I think we should take a quick look at that first. New to Contact 8 is the Chords tool. You can see it at the top here, and I'm using it in conjunction with Fables, an instrument which is new to Complete 15, but you can use it with any contact instrument at all. Now, basically, it allows you to apply seven preset chords to the white keys of your piano keyboard spread across three octaves, making it really easy to play the chord progressions in your piece. Let's just have a quick example of what it can do and keep an eye on that piano keyboard at the bottom to see what I'm actually playing. Now I'm using the Arpilligrano, I think I said that right, preset. You can see that at the top here, but if you click on that, you can see there's a whole bunch of presets for you to choose from, giving you a basic set of chords with each of them, and you can filter those by genre, type, and style. But once you've got one of those presets applied here, you can go ahead and customize these chords in all different kinds of ways. First of all, you can change the voicings of the chords, so you can go into a chord and either record a new voicing yourself using your keyboard, or you can go in and use a chord from another preset, or you can even choose a random chord, which is kind of a fun thing to do, to be honest with you, if you're lacking inspiration. Now, all of these chords can be dragged out into your door individually, or you can take them as a whole collection and drag them out into your door as well. There's a few other different ways that you can customize them. You can use the human feature here that will uh, change the way the chords are being played and there's a few different parameters here that you can change to change the way that it humanizes your chords and you can also make use of the strum feature either strumming up or down and changing the actual timing of the strum and you can see that visually represented up the top there now we were working in the key of F sharp minor there but you can go ahead and change the key completely I could go up and change it to major and if we have have a listen to my little demo again, you'll hear that it's changed significantly. much happier all of a sudden, but I'd advise you to experiment with a few of these different ones here, especially things like Dorian, Lydian, all those kinds of things. You can get some sort of happy mistakes if, if you don't quite understand what all of these keys are. Now, I've been using it in the very simple mode here, but you can also go over to the advanced mode where you play the chords in a little bit of a different way on the keyboard, and you can get uh, quite a lot more variations in terms of results. We also have the phrases tool, which we can see at the top here. And just like the chords tool, it can be used with any contact instrument. I'm using it with this acoustic preset from the Contact Factory Library 2. Now, essentially, we have seven different phrases which we can apply to the white keys on our keyboard again, making it super easy to play more complex pieces. Let's have a listen to this demo and take a look at what I'm actually playing on the keyboard board.
Now, just like we saw with the chords tool, we've got a whole bunch of presets that we can choose from here, which we can filter by genre, type, and style. And once we've loaded up that preset, we can customize our phrases as well in several different ways. First of all, we can take a phrase and we can choose which parts of it are actually being played by using this outer ring here. We can control where the phrase starts using this rotate tool here. We've also got an invert tool so we can change the order in which the notes are being played. And then we have a whole bunch of controls over here which control our actual playing as we're performing this. So a really awesome tool. One of the new tabs you're going to see in contact is the leap tab. If we go there, we'll see basically a bunch of sound expansions, but the way they behave is like a sampler within a sampler. We'll take a look at one of them in a moment, but first of all, let's have a listen to some samples of a few of them. Acoustic drums. Disco and funk. Platinum pop. Hopefully you get the idea. There's a whole bunch of inspiration in there for you if you're lacking it. So let's take a look at hot vocals. Now basically all of these leap sound expansions behave in the same way. You've got lots of samples applied to keys of the keyboard and we can go ahead and play some of them like so. Crazy. So of course you can combine them together, you don't have to play the whole sample, you can play just a part of it and you can go in and edit them as well. So lots of options in these leap expansions here, definitely worth trying out. There's a whole bunch of new instruments included in Complete 15, including the new Cathara, Fables, Valves Pro, Vocal Colors, Schema Dark, Schema Light, Action Woodwinds, Alicia's Electric Keys, Acoustic Sunburst Deluxe, Upright Bass, and Session Percussionist. Now that's too much to choose from, so I've decided to give you my top five favorite new instruments. Finishing off with my absolute favorite, and therefore I suppose my favorite part of Complete 15. Now, opinions may differ, so give me yours in the comments down below. But for now, let's dive in with my number five pick. Session Basis Upright Bass is one of, if not my favorite, upright bass libraries. Now you can use it in a really simple way using the melody mode, and it's going to sound a little bit like this. Now I just used the open articulation there, but you've got a few to choose from and you can switch between them while you're actually performing. Let's try out the muted articulation. Have a listen again. you get the idea. Now, another way you can use this library is to use the pattern mode. And with this, you can play some pretty complex sort of patterns pretty quickly. And it's really useful if you wanna get your composition going really quickly. Let's have a listen to one of the patterns here. Now there's a whole bunch of different sets of patterns you can choose from. I'm using the spy here, but if we go in here, you can see there's loads of them and you can filter them by genre, etc. So it's a very, very useful way to get your upright bass part going very, very quickly indeed. Alicia's electric keys is quite a new instrument in the native instruments range, as well as being completely new to complete. Let's have a listen to the basic grand preset. Mm. 
Now, as well as that preset, we've got a whole bunch of others, as you can see here on the right hand side. We're just going to try a couple of them today. So let's try Neo Grand and see how that changes the sound. <laughs> Nice. Now let's try bubble and see how that sounds. Actually, I really like that. Now, the reason we're able to get so many or such varied sounds out of the one instrument is we've got all of these controls on the front panel here, as well as if we go to the instrument tab here, we've got a whole bunch of other controls to kind of shape the sound here. And we can also add effects as well. Now, this is in my top five because I think it's both simple to use and quite usable, but quite versatile at the same time. I think rather than explain vocal colors, we'll just have a listen to it. Isn't that just delicious sounding? Now we can use four possible components to make up the sounds in this instrument. First of all, we've got an arpeggiator here, which wasn't being used by that particular preset. Then we've got layer one, which was being used by that preset, layer two, and then a particles layer. So let's just solo layer one for that preset and have a listen to what it was actually doing. Okay, and that was combined with the particles layer, which was doing this. So that was making up most of the sound there. And as I say, it wasn't making use of the arpeggiator or layer two. So let's go to a preset which makes use of the arpeggiator and have a look at what that's doing. Awesome. Now let's try something which uses all four components and have a listen and a look at that. I can see session percussionists becoming very, very useful to me. Now, essentially, you have five different slots for five different percussion instruments. You can choose them here. There's various different instruments that you can choose from. Now, with each of these slots, you have a dedicated octave on the keyboard to play them. Now, some of those keys in that octave will play a preset rhythm. So, for example, with this cajon in slot a, which is in red here, we can look down the bottom and see those five red keys there, which will play those preset rhythms. Let's have a listen. And of course, you can edit those rhythms by clicking on the key up here, and that brings up the editor to do that. Now, there's also a number of other different keys in each octave, the purple ones, which play individual hits on that instrument. Now, this is really useful because we can combine all of these different rhythms with the different instruments together and build up patterns with some variation in them. So let's start off with a cajon. And add another. And a tambourine. And a cabasa. Let's do some variations. magic. I'm going to let my number one pick, a brand new instrument called Kithara, speak for itself.
Now that preset is actually made up of four different instruments. We've got the attack instrument, which is the main kind of note that we hear initially. Then we've got a instrument which takes care of the sustain, then one that takes care of sustain too, and then another instrument which only plays on release. So let's have a listen to the attack instrument by itself. And if we click on this instrument, we can see it's basically made up from a flamenco guitar. That's what's making the sound. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the sustain one instrument, we'll have a listen to that. Now, it's also based on a flamenco guitar, but as you can hear, it's been heavily processed. Then we move on to Sustain 2. This one is called Speeding Up, Slowing Down, and it's based upon, let me have a look, a mandolin. Have a listen. Nice. And then finally, we have the instrument which is played on release. It's called Octave Spread, and it's based on a mandola. And I'll just play the key and release it, and then you'll hear the instrument. And we can see why it's called Octave Spread. So when we turn all of those on and hear them all together, they sound like this. Now, of course, there's a number of different ways you can adjust the sound of the overall instrument, first of all, with this front panel here, and this can control the sound during performance. Then you've got your individual layers where you can kind of blend the different instruments together. Then you've got fragments and then effects. I'm not gonna explain all of those now, but as you can imagine, there's many different ways to change the sounds. And eventually, if you do make changes to your sounds, and I'm waiting for a preset to load, as I. I say this, you may end up with a new sound, perhaps something like this. Now, one thing we didn't touch upon much in today's video was the included Ozone 11 standard. Now, I still think this is one of the best plugins of all time, but why? To find out, you must watch this video right here. I'm Mike, I hope you're well, and I'll see you in that video.